Hello and welcome back to another webinar video of Circuit Digest. For today's webinar, we have Mr. Mayank Rajput, who was the founder of the company Stretch Screen Electronics. Sorry, Stretch Skin Technologies. So Stretch Skin Technologies makes wearable technologies and they make smart sensors and wearable gloves for a plenty of wearable applications. So let's discuss with them and see what his company is up to and how they are leveraging the market of wearable electronics and what are their plans for the market. So, hi Mike. Hi Ashwin, how are yeah, you? I'm very good. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Yeah. So, uh, Mayank, what is Stretch Screen Electronics or what is your company doing? So, uh, uh, our company is Stretch Screen Technologies, which is based in Singapore. So, we develop wearables using mm -hmm. flexible and stretchable electronic technology. Mm -hmm. So, we make sensors using the stretchable electronics. So, we use conduct stretchable conducting inks, mm -hmm. soft functional materials, compliant membranes, sensors, and integrated functional chips mm -hmm. to make the complete sensor. And these sensors have applications in retail rehab, mm -hmm. smart clothing, gaming, industry 4.0, etc. So the opportunities are uh, endless. So it's up to you, like how you want to use your creativity to solve the particular use case. Okay. So Mike, people say stretchable electronics and then e-skin. Does both of these terminologies refer to the same? What is the difference between both of these? Okay, so uh, e-skin is the electronic skin. So electronic skin is like we are seeing skin because the uh, because it's only few millimeter uh, thin layer of the electronics. Mm -hmm. So you are embedding on the functional chip everything on a very small thin layer of the plastic or the polymer. So this is e-skin. So e-skin can be flexible as well as stretchable. Okay. So uh, does both of these mean the same when we say e-skin, is it uh, also like wearable uh, device, something like that? Yes. So e-skin can be artificial skin, which is like a, a small patch, which is quite thin, couple of millimeters thin. So that is equivalent to the human skin. So that's why we refer it as electronic skin, like artificial skin. Uh, so what is the problem with existing wearable devices? We already have our smart fitness pants and there are so many other wearable devices in the market. What is the problem with these existing wearable devices and why do you think the market will go towards stretchable electronics slowly? Okay, so currently people, most of the people and most of the companies are using CMOS based electronic sensors, which are definitely mechanically rigid and brittle. Okay. At the same time, these sensors has limitations in terms of big sizes, unable to deform in particular different shapes and sizes. Okay. At the same time, accuracy also changes because let's say just take an example of one wearable watch. If you are moving your hand tilted here and there, then it will just take the value of that particular movement. Okay. So that means like those sensors are designed in such a way that like if you're moving your hand a little bit here and there, then it will also measure the wrong value. Mm -hmm. But if you are using your stretchable electronic based sensors, then it is, it's already embedded directly attached to your body. So that means it's not moving here and there. So it will give them more accuracy. At the same time, people are looking for more immersiveness. So that's why people are looking for the true conformal uh, electronic bo truly body conformal systems so that they can have the true immersive experience and mm -hmm. It is also comfortable because it's lightweight. Okay. So Mike, what inspired you to start Stretch Skin Technologies and how did the company get off the ground during the initial stages? So uh, in Singapore, during my master's, I used to volunteer for most of, uh, with multiple NGOs, which are, which were working uh, towards the elderly rehab and elderly care centers. So I used to visit there several times. So we saw I, along with my co-founder, we met there. So we realized that there are a lot of problems in the rehab stuff. So people are not motivated at all. At the same time, there are not enough uh, affordable wearables mm -hmm. which people can use. So that was the major problem. So this is why we decided to just pursue our venture in this particular area of rehab. And I already had a technical background in sensors technology earlier. Mm -hmm. So that's why we decided to pursue using flexible and stretchable electronics to make the sensors for this market. That is our primary market and other markets are gaming, smart clothing, etc. So we started our venture in October 2018 with a vision to solve the major healthcare problem, which is rehab in Asia, because in Southeast Asia itself, more than 
uh, 200 million people need rehab every year so this is according to who report can you so explain can a bit that. more detail on how these stretchable electronics can help in rehab okay so for rehab you see like uh, people have different different problems some people have knee problems some people have ankle some people have joint problems and some people just recover from a stroke mm-hmm. so if you see like some people have the problem while moving their fingers mm-hmm. so if you see they have the movement problem with their fingers they are not able to hold the things in an effective way mm-hmm. so that is a gripping problem mm-hmm. so using the stretchable electronic sensors as i mentioned earlier these sensors are highly comf- like truly comfortable with the human body Okay. so that's why like people don't feel bored at the same time like they are okay with these kind of things like which are not bulky at all okay. so these sensors you are just putting the sensors on the finger okay. let's say you are putting on the finger or you are putting on this joint okay. so you you are putting the sensor like this okay. so when you have the sensor in this area so that means you are measuring capturing whether the person is able to move the hand here or not okay so, like this or not okay. so right now most of the rehab centers and hospitals have the bulky camera based systems okay. or kinetic based systems or some inertial measurement unit like using accelerometer gyrometer and magnetometer okay. but the thing is that those things those things are quite bulky okay. and most of the th- things are not suitable for the home setting so okay. if you have these smart portable sensors okay. which are low cost at the same time provide like high level of accuracy okay. to the people then it can help them to recover faster okay. and it also provide the real time data to those people who are the specialist in rehab or the doctors or the clinics or some high sports clinics etc mm-hmm. so this is how we are solving the problem in rehab okay so is it like the device will be different for every joint on the body say for example uh, if it is fingers you have to design a different type of product for ankles you have to define, design a different type of product would it be uh, like that okay so your uh, sensors sensor measurement unit which is signal conditioning unit will be same for all the sensors mm-hmm. but there will be different shape and sizes of the sensor based okay. on your different body parts mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the electronic measurement unit and which is a signal conditioning unit which will be same for all the sensors mm-hmm. but your sensors will be of different shape and size mm-hmm. that is the only difference okay so and the patient will be wearing this only at the time of rehab or is it like yes uh, Yes, okay. yes, yes. Uh, actually, uh, this is like the our first product. Yes, they are wearing only at a particular time. Mm-hmm. But we are also designing one fitness patch, which is high elastic, mm-hmm. which can measure your step count, your heart rate, your oxygen level, your body temperature, your ECG, etc. Mm-hmm. So it will be combined with the oral rehab solution. So you can say this is most of the like this is this will help for achieving the. goal of wh also for active aging because okay. whole world is getting older and older so there is a need of strong rehab everywhere and there is not enough workforce in terms of uh, caregivers in terms of rehab specialists etc who can solve this problem so that's why we believe that uh, if we are having these sensors or this technology then it will really help them in a better way okay So you told your primary concentration is on helping with rehab patients, but you also told that you're working on gaming industry and other places where uh, stretchable electronics can be uh, leveraged upon. So, what is your primary focus, and what products are you currently working on, and which product from your company will hit the market first? Okay, so uh, our core technology is uh, stretchable sensors, as I mentioned earlier, which is strain sensor mainly, strain mm-hmm. sensor and force sensors. We are focusing on two sensors only. Mm-hmm. So our first product is uh, uh, VEX, which is virtual exercise therapy system. So it has multiple exercises and games. Mm-hmm. So games you you can control with the help of using the wearables. Let's say you want to do scouts in terms of like you want to do the exercise for the lower side, mm-hmm. like the joints and ankles, for the leg, mm-hmm. for the hand. so you are just doing like this like that like you are just moving your hand in such a way that it will replicate in the particular system whatever we have that is virtual exercise uh, therapy system pets mm-hmm. so you are controlling the games with the help of wearables so this is what we have so this is our first product and this is data driven because we are capturing the data with the help of stretchable sensors which are controlling the games at the same time it's giving the image Uh, immersive experience to the users mm-hmm. so which is it's helping in terms of personalized recommendation mm-hmm. and it's affordable so 
this is what we have. So this is going to the first product. And we have already deployed the VAT system in more than 10 rehab centers in Singapore. Mm -hmm. So we have already internally tested the variables first. Mm -hmm. So we will apply for the certification soon for those variables so that we can deploy everything together as a final product. So right now we have launched a pilot system of 10 units and it's currently being yeah. tested. Uh, no, at 10 rehab centers at least, okay, at with 10, thousand, yeah. more than 1000 people. We have already okay. tested the virtual exercise therapy system, which is okay. VETS. So how has been the feedback for the product so far, Mai? It was good. It was really good. People really enjoy it because gamification is like uh, engaging more and more people. Let's say if we are also visiting the hospital, the doctor will say, you need to do, do this exercise. You need to do that, that exercise. Sometimes mm -hmm. after first few days, we will perform that thing. But after some time, we will feel boredom. Mm -hmm. So to remove that boredom, mm -hmm. there is there should be some fun element, which is the gamification part. So mm -hmm. we gamify the exercise mm -hmm. with the real data capturing mm -hmm. with gaming. So this okay. is why that's why people are enjoying this. Okay. So, uh, how long do you think it would take for the product to hit the market from now? Uh, first our target market is Singapore, then definitely India. So we are, uh, in Singapore, we have already deployed the virtual exercise therapy system. Mm -hmm. So due to COVID, uh, we decided to delay a few things for some time. So now soon we will apply for the certification that will not take time because we are going as a fitness and wellness company. We are not going as a med tech company. Okay. So that's why the certification will be quite faster. Mm -hmm. So we believe that in next uh, six months or eight months, we will be in the market like because you already have a uh, multiple clients like from Singapore, from Malaysia, from Australia, mm -hmm. from UK, from India. Mm -hmm. Those are really interested in buying that thing. So we have already signed some LOIs, etc. with these partners. Okay. So we will deploy as soon as we will have the complete certification in our hand. Mm -hmm. So Mike, when you're working with wearable technology, what kind of technical challenges do you face? Okay, so one of the major challenges is like uh, the mass manufacturing part. Right now we are using screen printing and some different printing techniques, uh, which is in-house. Mm -hmm. So you can make a couple of hundreds of thousands sensor only. Mm -hmm. But let's say if you have a bulk order and you want, because we mentioned we want to go for the mass manufacturing because so that we can serve more and more people. So mm -hmm. in that scenario, we need to go for the mass manufacturing and uh, the techniques that we are using for printing right now with our proprietary inks mm -hmm. will not work for mass manufacturing. So we are working with some partners. We are in the process of signing some strategic partnership from US based companies, which are the contract manufacturer for printed electronics. Mm -hmm. So we will provide our recipes, our mm -hmm. inks, mm -hmm. as well as our design and they will print for us. So in that scenario, we will go for the mass manufacturing. So this is how we are working right now. Okay. Uh, when you say print, what exactly do you refer here, Mike? Okay. So printed electronic is, so we have stretchable conducting inks. Mm -hmm. So those stretchable conducting inks we are using for making the conducting tracks mm -hmm. for making different, different uh, units such as inductors, capacitor, resistor, Mm -hmm. sensors, which are four sensor, EMG sensor, or you can say a uh, strain sensor, which is the motion sensor. Mm -hmm. So we are using that particular ink. So okay. to print that ink on stretchable substrate, mm -hmm. which can be your Ecoflex, which can be your polyurethane based substrates. Mm -hmm. Substrate means which will hold the complete unit. Mm -hmm. So this is what uh, I'm referring here. So uh, when you say ECG sensor, does it mean you have to print an entire sensor to measure an ECG or will you be using an off the shelf ECG sensor or uh, how does it work? No, no, we are, uh, sorry, I was talking about EMG sensor, but you can okay. say ECG also for okay. ECG right now, most of the practices are you are, you have to use uh, gel, gel based electrode. So you need okay. to put the gel, then you need to put the electrode here. Mm -hmm. So here we are making your gel less, gel less electrode, which is the dry electrodes. So you don't need any kind of gel. You can use our stretchable conducting surface with, in the form of ECG electrode, and you can just paste it with the help of some, uh, uh, because you, that will be complete assembly. So you don't need any kind of gel in that. So this is how you will use these kind of sensors. Okay. Uh, another problem when we say wearable electronics is the power consumption. Now, obviously, this is going to be uh, the same thing in the stretchable electronics as well. It should be portable, it should be light. 
and at the same time it should be powered for a longer duration so how does your company deal with these uh, power situation okay so currently we are using uh, bluetooth low energy which is ble ble based systems which work at 2.4 gigahertz frequencies mm -hmm. uh, like the modular modular system is quite simple as compared to bluetooth and wi-fi mm -hmm. so we are using this ble system to communicate our devices mm -hmm. but we are focusing on particular use cases such as rehab such as gaming so so gaming doesn't mean like you are working you are playing 24 7 for rehab it doesn't mean you're doing rehab particular 24 7 okay. you're doing rehab for let's say 15 minutes 30 minutes or one hour so mm -hmm. th that's why uh power consumption is not a major concern for us because okay. we can run our device for a couple of days or months also based on the user experience like how they want to use okay so uh when we say stretchable sensors, or what kind of sensors do you use in your products, mind? Uh, for the sensor part, we we are currently we are using a strain sensor, force sensor, EMG electrodes, and the passive components, which are resistor, capacitor, and inductor. So we are printing them mm -hmm. on the stretchable substrate, and we are using them for making the particular use case, such as for gaming, such as for smart clothing, such as for rehab, with the help of another set of sensors, which are inertial measurement units. So you will get some particular degree of freedom using our sensor. Okay. You will get some particular degree of freedom from those sensors. So that means you will have more options in terms of sens sensitivity, as well as availability. Like you can use the multiple uh, access movement, etc. everything you can okay. try. So how many of these sensors are actually designed by uh, stretch skin and what type of sensors do you outsource or you know take it from the existing manufacturers? So we have designed our strain sensor as well as the dry electrode as well as I mentioned resistor capacitor okay. by ourselves but the inertial measurement unit which okay. are which is a combination of your accelerometer, gyrometer and magnetometer we are procuring from third parties. Okay. That is a different thing. So to increase the capability of the gaming thing. So okay. as I mentioned earlier, like for the gaming stuff, you will require multiple degree of freedom. So you need to move left, right, up, down at a particular angle. At the same time, you need to move the fingers, etc. So for the movement of fingers, etc., okay. you will have D sensors, whatever we have designed. And for okay. the axis rotation movement here and there, up, down, left, right, at a particular angle, mm -hmm. we are using inertial measurement unit, which is a third party sensor. Okay. So this is how we are using sensor fusion. Okay, sensor fusion. Fine. So uh, yeah. the sensors that were designed by stretch skin, was it a choice that you made or didn't you have any choice? Like if you want to use uh, off the shelf components, do you have an option or is it like there is no option in the market and if you want to design a wearable device uh, with a stretchable electronics, you have to make one on your own? Actually, if you're buying, because there are not many players in this area, so that's why if you're buying off the shelf sensor from another startups who are working in this area, then it will be highly expensive. So there is no point of saying affordability, there's no point of saying you need to hit the particular market. So that's why we are designing as well as we are manufacturing by ourselves. So that's why we can reduce the cost. But yes, there are options available in the market. You can use a third party sensors. The companies are mainly from US and Europe. Okay, fine, fine. Now, uh, what is your plan for market mining? Uh, where do you start uh, to sell your products and what is your plan to hit the market? Okay. Uh market in terms of uh, if i will say like the stretchable electronics market is quite big like uh, the sensor itself the market is us us dollar 400 million but if you see the applications in terms of rehab in terms of gaming in terms of smart clothing mm -hmm. it's more than 300 billion usd mm -hmm. so our main focus is on the asian market first because uh, uh, we can go to the us market also mm -hmm. but uh, we are following some different strategy. So we are just seeing the mass market, like in terms of going for a particular niche segment mm -hmm. or a niche market where we can keep the price high and just have very small customers. We are going for the more customers with the less price. So we are focusing on Southeast Asian market mm -hmm. as well as Indian market. So first market, definitely target market is Singapore, then Malaysia, India, followed by the Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So who do you think will adapt this technology very fast? Would it be the rehab sector or the gaming sector? Whom do you think it's easy for them to adapt this technology? Uh, for rehab, definitely yes. 
but uh, we should use the word active rehab or active gaming okay. so active gaming like if you see people are interested in yoga people are interested in fitness and wellness etc they are going to gym they are going exercise at home so they are interested in these kind of product like so this is the b2b segment mm-hmm. sorry b2c segment consumer segment but if i am talking about b2b segment definitely the sports therapist who are for who are for cricket for baseball for volleyball etc they are looking for these kind of sensing technologies mm-hmm. and in india also we were approached by two cricket uh, teams actually from uh, one is from ipl one is from ranji team so okay. they are also interested in our technology okay. so i believe that like this is my perception that people in active gaming or active rehab in special fitness and wellness area will adopt this technology faster because still because right now people are okay to buy the fitness bands etc which are costing us around 100 usd 150 usd for a good quality one like if you're going for the premium one Mm-hmm. so if we have something which is like 40 to 50 dollars and it's giving them high immersive experience as well as to fulfill whatever they want to achieve like the fitness goal then people are okay with that so definitely first market is rehab mm-hmm. that uh, we are hoping to penetrate in a big way with the help of fitness and wellness area and the second thing is gaming so gaming has like uh, some issues in asia most of the gamers usually spend uh 50 to 60 usd per annum like the good active gamers spend 50 to 60 dollars i am just talking about the whole asia not india not china mm-hmm. so the per capita income also vary in th- those countries such, such as philippines indonesia thailand etc mm-hmm. so there are a lot of gamers so they usually spend 50 to 60 dollars per annum on buying the gaming peripheral mm-hmm. so we have gloves we have single finger wearables mm-hmm. so people are okay with that much amount of like whatever we are selling we are selling for less than 100 dollars those wearables mm-hmm. so people are okay with that but it's very difficult for the gamers to adopt these kind of new technologies because you see like gamers have always have the perception to use keyboard and mouse like mm-hmm. they use some big companies uh, keyboard mouse such as nintendo such as razer etc all these companies have their own wearables not wearables i should say consoles mm-hmm. so they are using those things so people are okay those things so it's so it's a kind of change of mind shift oh. so it will definitely take some time to adapt to a new technology so that's why we are working with the gaming companies and we have already talked to some big manufacturer of gaming consoles which we want to include our wearables in the portfolio okay. so all this is like very exciting to hear and i really hope that soon there will be wearable stretchable electronics everywhere and yeah. people will be uh, using it in their uh, rehab or gaming or whatever application it might be so uh, thank you so much for joining us today mayank thank you ashwin